and welcome back to another episode of Sit and Spit with me, your host Joe Royland. Uh, sorry I was absent last week, um, just super busy at work, couldn't quite get it done. But also, this week's album, I wanted to give it a little bit more time because a couple cursory listens just weren't going to do it. I wanted to devote a little bit more time to this record, and I'm glad I did because it uh, definitely paid off. And of course we're talking about the latest record from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Getaway. It is the band's 11th album. Second with guitarist John Cl Josh Klinghoffer, who debuted on 2011's I'm With You, and the first time that they've used someone other than Rick Rubin as a producer in 25 years. That's right, instead they went with Danger Mouse, aka Brian Burton, who you may know as being one half of Gnarls Barkley with CeeLo Green, or Broken Bells with James Mercer of The Shins, or from the many production albums he's done with like The Gorillas, The Black Keys, and dozens of other people. And the album was also engineered and mixed by Nigel Goodrich, known for his work with bands like Radiohead, Beck, Paul McCartney, and again, a host of other people. So you know it's gonna sound great as well. And as such, the getaway marks a little bit of a, bit of a new beginning for the Peppers. Don't, Hear, bear me out, hear me out on this. You know, The band rose to fame from the late 80s and early 90s on their funk rock sound. And admittedly, it was great for the 90s decade. Worked perfectly well, especially when Blood Sugar Sex Magic came out. It was kind of like blew up and then all of a sudden there were a bunch of other bands that sounded like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And then over the course of the years and the albums they released with them, admittedly, even myself, I kind of got played out on that sound. It wasn't that the albums weren't good. And there were definitely some great songs to be heard here and there. But it just got much of the same and when they released like Stadium Arcadium uh, double record set it was kind of a bit of a slog for me just to get through all that and so I I'll admit I tuned out on the Chili Peppers and really it wasn't until I'm With You in 2011 that was the album that brought me back into the fold and at first I was kind of just interested in it because I'm like wow they're gonna have a new guitar player John Frusciante is a great guitarist I love his solo work as well I was interested to hear how it would sound without them but the cool thing about it was that it kind of had John's blessing because Josh Josh Klinghoffer was somebody that Frusciante has worked with so if he has Frusciante's blessing I'm kind of in on that and then I listened to the album and I really liked it a lot it gets a lot of flack from some other Chili Peppers fans and fans in general it didn't really get a whole lot of love when it came out but I thought it was a great record, particularly in its second side. Um, and kind of where they were showing on the album's second side was a bit where they were going to kind of go with Getaway. But I think the problem, if you could say there was a problem with I'm With You, was that they kind of played it safe a little bit. They almost played it off as like, hey, we've got a new guitar player, but with the, still the same old band. And, they, you know, they went a bit predictable with the first couple of singles they released. And to me, it was like they picked all the wrong singles for the first songs. Stuff like Adventures of Rain Dance Maggie and the Monarchy of Roses, which, while not bad songs, just kind of played to that aspect of like people like me and other people who kind of got tired of the Chili Peppers. It was kind of like, ugh, this again, you know? Uh, but there was so much more to be had on that album, and most people never even got to hear it experiences. Great tracks like Happiness Loves Company, uh, Goodbye Hooray, and especially like Police Station. And there's tracks like that that kind of laid the groundwork for where they're going to be going with the Getaway. So in essence, kind of playing a safe backfired for the Chili Peppers, but I'm with you. But now that there's been a little bit of time, it's been five years since that record came out. Chili's have had a chance to come back. They got some new life breathed into them in the production turns with Danger Mouse, who's kind of bringing his elements to the band. And as such, the getaway, while it still features funky sound, it's much more of a laid back, groovy, in the pocket kind of funk sound. And the album in general is the most mellow, if you want to use that word, or ambient or laid back that the group have ever done. And they've done great ballads in the past, too. Songs like Under the Bridge and Scar Tissue and Soul to Squeeze, but they've never really kind of sustained that vibe over most of a whole album, as this is the case here. And that's kind of not to be unexpected, especially when you take into mind the Danger Mouse and Nigel Goodrich and their involvement in working on that. But in a way, you can almost liken the getaway to being kind of like the first time you heard Blood Sugar Sex Magic. It's kind of that different from like what the Peppers have done before to what they're doing now. And it's almost like they've said, hey, you've heard what we are capable of before. Here's what else we can do. And as such, the getaway isn't so much of a reinvention of the band sound, so much as it is a reassessment and a reawakened spirit to taking things to the next level musically and a different musical level. So you get a whole kind of different vibe to the getaway but I really dig it and it definitely as I said kind of 
unfolds its magic to you on repeated, repeated listens. Definitely a record you want to spend some time with and get into. I think a lot of this, the getaway, is also part to uh, Josh Klinghoffer's guitar style, which is different from John Frusciante's. I'm not trying to put down John Frusciante with any of this because he's, like I said, he's a great guitar player, but Klinghoffer's a little bit different. If you were to talk about guitar playing like painting, you would I would say that Klinghoffer plays with uh, more of a fine brush work and color accenting here and there, more playing for what the song needs rather than using broad strokes of paint and flash and color and stuff. And he could do that stuff when he needs to, but mostly it's very subtle and tasty stuff, more laid back, but when he wants to cut loose, as he does on the solo for the song you hear right now, Dark Necessities, which if you paid attention to the page before, I showed you the video for that, and instantly when you heard that song, you kind of knew that things were maybe going to be a little different for the Chili Peppers on this album, but in a good way. And also songs like uh, Goodbye Angels, where he kind of shreds and tears it up a little bit. After that, the album's opener, which you already heard, kind of clues you into where we're going with the record, and that's followed right up with Dark Necessities, great, we're hearing now, which is a great track. And, you know, that isn't to say that there isn't some funked up stuff on this record. It's just not as, like, up here. It's more like kind of here. Tracks like We Turn Red, which was almost going to be the first single. I'm kind of glad they didn't go with that and they went with Dark Necessities instead. But it's got kind of a low-down, dirty funk vibe to it, as well as Detroit, which is another great song of the album, or This Ticonderoga, which is about as heavy as things get on this record. But even then, those songs are kind of tempered with some more laid-back and mellow moments. Other than that, this album is full of great highlights. Sick Love is another track that stands out to me a lot. It's got a slinky 70s style feel to it with Elton John piano part on it. That's kind of cool. Uh, that track on the album is followed up by uh, the disco funk of Go Robot, which again is another strong contender for a great single for the album and wins additional points for me just for its mere mention of Alice Cooper and the lyrics. <coughs> Other songs I really like on this album below are the final three tracks on the album, which are the ones that really, really do it for me. They almost kind of form like a big closing suite that's kicked off with the song Encore. <coughs> Excuse me. Which uh, starts off and features this sort of silical cycling bass guitar riff that sets this cool musical vibe that I really dig. That track, the first time I heard it, just kind of stuck in my head over and over again. I'm like, ooh, what? I gotta find out what that song is. I really like it. And that one flows into a song called The Hunter, which is a haunting ballad with some great Anthony Curtis lyrics about fathers and sons. And I can relate to that. And some sweet guitar touches from Josh Klinghoffer. And also, Josh is playing bass on that track. It's the first time Flea has not played bass on a Red Hot Chili Peppers track. But he does turn in a very fine, sweet trumpet solo because Flea's an accomplished trumpet player as well as a bassist and a piano player. And then the last track on the album sails out Dreams of a Samurai on this kind of hypnotic, dirty groove that I also like. And it's just the perfect album closing cut. And just some nice guitar touches here and there. Still Flea's trademark bass work. Chad Smith just turning in some great cussing points throughout the whole album. And Anthony Kiedis is Anthony Kiedis. But all in all, a solid offering from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Have you given up on the man? Time to look into him again because The Getaway is a fantastic record. It deserves your attention especially more than just a song or two here, but uh, it's a very rewarding, lush album that just gets better and better and better with every listen. And that's the show for this week. Go out, pick up the Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Getaway, cool cover on the front. Uh, the band said that they, they, the picture of the, uh, on the album actually represents the band. Chad is the bear, Josh is the girl, Flea's the raccoon, and the raven is Anthony. Don't know who the fox is, but maybe it's Malcolm. That's his spirit animal, but who knows. <laughs> anyway... That's all I got for you this week, and we will catch you next time on Sit and Spin. See you then.